Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome and thank you for joining the Aquinix Tech Up. I'm Candace from Aquinix. Glad to see you all. The theme of today's session is about how companies of any size and stage of digital maturity can take on emerging technology while creating new streams of revenue. We're happy to have Thomas Lee and Garina Z from our product solutions team. They're going to discuss the latest scene in everything as a service, sustainability considerations, and finish off with a demo showcasing how easy you can architect your infrastructure in minutes and capture new opportunities. Some housekeeping notes before we start. We will address your questions after the presentation. Online attendees can post questions in a Q&A window on Zoom. And don't forget to stay till the end and take part in our survey, where you can get a chance to win Equinix Metal free credits of 100 US dollars and sign up for the Network Edge free trial. Now, without further ado, let's kick off today's session. Thomas and Garina, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Garina, and I'm here with my colleague Thomas. Today, we are going to dive deeper into everything as a service and have a conversation about how this is transforming the business landscapes and how we at Equinus can help you to take advantage of everything as a service to transform your business. Hi. Thanks, Karina. So I'm also very excited to be here and uh, discussing this important and very trendy topic with you. Uh, when it comes to taking on emerging tech in a breeze, and um, everything as a service is a very useful tool to, to do this, okay? For, especially for anyone who wants to try out and implement a new technology quickly, that is a very uh, good uh, business model. But uh, how about we uh, start with the basics first? Karina, can you explain to our audience what a uh, as a service model is and how it is different from traditional uh, business models? Sure, Thomas. So um, everything as a service stands for delivering everything or anything as a service, which is a model where businesses can quickly access powerful innovations and accelerate their digital transformation without the cost and risk of ownership. This is made possible by the emerging subscription economy where business can subscribe to servers on demand like pay as you go, instead of investing in expensive hardware and software. Nice. So how about we give an example for people who are new to this model? Maybe it's yeah, easy to understand. Yeah, everything as a service is a more general term. So I believe the most people heard about the software as a service infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. For example, Microsoft offers 365 self faults, an example of software as a service. Software as a service indicate a range of applications that are delivered over the internet and accessed through the web browsers or specific applications via a subscription rather than on installed in the local computers. With Salesforce, Users can access the customer customer's relationship management, CRM, software, and, and related services via the cloud without needing to download or install the software in their local computers. This allows for greater flexibility, scalability, and ease of use compared to the traditional software delivery model. Yes, uh, this as a service subscription model has become even more popular uh, during the pandemic. And for the term XAAS, nowadays, if you replace that X with any letters in the alphabet, you will definitely find a real uh, genuine service that you can actually subscribe to. Uh, as a service model allows businesses to quickly and easily access the latest technology without the need for significant uh, investment. So this means that company can stay up to date with emerging technology and experience with new tools and scale up or down as needed. It is so popular. It is not just for IT related business anymore. Uh, a lot of traditional businesses are also offering their products uh, using a subscription model. For example, I have seen uh, many fashion brands, right? You can actually subscribe to them and uh, they will send you a box of the latest trend uh, on a regular interval and you can decide what to keep and then what to return. 
There's also a hotline or sometimes uh, there's very popular real-time chat as a service, okay? For smaller companies who doesn't want to hire or train their own people to run a full-fledged hotline service, they can simply subscribe to, to, to um, a hotline as a service. There's even banking as a service that I've seen. Uh, and in the past, we have seen co-branded credit cards, for example, airlines and department stores, they offer banking services through these co-branded credit cards. But now it's so easy to, to include these banking services. For example, if you go on website, when you buy something, often you, are, you will be uh, uh, presented with uh, something called buy now and pay later scheme, or sometimes even for, for airlines or travel agencies, they can offer insurance schemes as well at the same time. These are all achievable through, through a subscription model. Yeah. As a, as a service, it's really changing the business landscape. And I think yes. it's it opening up a lot of new opportunities for business and also the consumers as well. Yes, yeah, I can't agree more. So, but before we dip, dive into the topic, so let us do a quick poll uh, with the audience today. So the question is, you should see it on the screen, uh, would you say your company is moving to a XAAS model? Okay. So uh, you can select yes, no, or I don't know. So uh, you'll be interested to see the result. And we will explain in a short uh, well, why we are asking you this question. <laughs> Okay, I think it's time for the results. Okay, so um, pretty equal. Uh, a lot of people say they don't know yet. So I think that's why you're here to listen more. Okay, True. great. Yeah. Well, very interesting. Very interesting result, result well. right? Yes. Yeah. And then the reason we ask this question is because we want to compare today's audience with our studies we did last year at Equinus. Thomas, can you share more on that? Yes, sure. At Equinix, we do a survey every year to learn more about the technology uh, industry and also the latest trends, uh, really to find out more about customers, what they are thinking. We call this a uh, global tech trend survey. Okay? So last year, we included some questions about XAAS in the survey because it's so trendy, right? Uh, we asked IT decisions makers from all over the world. I believe we sent over 3,000, nearly 4,000 surveys. And uh, uh, we asked them what they think about uh, XAAS. And uh, that was the, uh, we asked exactly the same questions we have, we've just asked you in the poll. So uh, the results came back and over 70% of them say they are moving to an XAAS model. And when we break it down by regions, we saw uh, uh, some important differences, especially in APEC where we are here. Um, APEC companies are most likely moving to a XAS model at 81%. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, and we also asked a question, what makes an, an everything as a service model attractive to their business as well? And it was interesting that APEC companies said that the SA service simplified their infrastructures. We have um, around 64% about that. And then they also like it is more flexible and also, and also improves the user experience as well. So it is clear that these core benefits of as a service is simple, is flexible, better experience, and it reduces overall cost as well. Yeah, who wouldn't want that, right? So, yes. Uh, but there are also other companies that, uh, on the other hand, not all companies are moving to as a service. For example, our poll, there's some people are still thinking, right? They're still observing. So, uh, so we asked why they are holding back, why they are not implementing. Okay, the result mm -hmm. is, I think, is equally interesting <laughs> because many of the reasons are exactly the opposite of why people like uh, as a service in the first place. Right? Uh, many said they are concerned with security. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is very genuine. That is true because uh, yes. who would who who want to risk right? Uh, 
Uh, and also, they do not want to take risks by betting with just one provider. A lot of them think you probably be locked by one provider if you use uh, as a service. And and among the many reasons came out, uh, the cost came out on top. So uh, uh, most people who are not moving to as a service model think it would increase the cost. So uh, actually, this answer. I find it very interesting because we have one side of the people saying as a service helps reduce the cost, but the other side saying it's it will increase cost. So uh, we, we did some further research. So obviously that is actually because as a service um, comes in many forms and it is not a one size fit all solutions model. So, uh, and another way, one way to explain this results could be some companies are, are too focused with costs or has a very tight budget and they haven't yet understood the full potential of a, uh, as a subscription model yet. So mm -hmm. that's why they are holding back and, and yeah. But however, I think that the responses definitely remind us that these are the real challenges company are currently facing when they are trying to adopt uh, XAAS. So when we are evaluating or implementing these services, I think we should definitely pay attention to the security side, the cost, and and the alternate or and the alternatives in the market, so that we avoid chances of being locked by a single vendor, right? Yes. So, yeah. Um, and as you all know, Equinix is a digital infrastructure provider. And we have been at the forefront of enabling digital transformation for many businesses around the world. Uh, we have helped a lot of companies, uh, customers to adopt XAAS model to their businesses. Okay? Not just uh, in a way how to make it easy for them to consume these services, but actually even more so how we enable companies to offer their own XAAS services to capture new opportunities. Yeah, here are some interesting and latest as a surface offering as a sample to show you um, to show you about. And then we think this would greatly enhance your business as well. Mm -hmm. If we say the latest trend is AI, I think no one will disagree with me that everyone knows what is ChatGPT, right? Yeah, who hasn't used ChatGPT? I use it very often. Actually, me too. To be honest, it is very helpful. Yeah. So, well, let's start with the first offering that we we uh, have it here in Equinix. We help M Nvidia to to deploy. So, it's a AI and machine learning as a service. Okay. The the service name is called uh, AI Launchpad. Okay. This platform is from from Nvidia. It's currently available for consumption on a as a service model on our Equinix Metal. So uh, Equinix Metal is our bare metal as a service. So we are running a AI as a service on top of a <laughs> bare metal as a service, okay? So uh, this lets users to choose and to scale if they want to deploy AI infrastructures, okay? They can do so at Equinix, okay? So um, uh, the industry that would greatly benefit from AI at the moment is really healthcare, transportations, manufacturings, and uh, finance. And, and we have seen advertising companies adopting this solutions too. Uh, but actually, uh, many other industry has found AI to be very useful too. Okay? For example, uh, I, I've seen service board uh, robots, right? Uh, fraud detections, uh, retail checkouts, so uh, you constantly get recommendations for online shopping, right? And and of course, most recently, chat GPTs are just a few uh, example of AI technology, how, how we can automate some of these tasks and actions, okay? Actually at Equinix, we are very excited because uh, we are the first digital infrastructure company to offer the NVIDIA AI Launchpad, okay? This instant AI infrastructure, uh, uh, is available in more than uh, in all our uh, 2,200 uh, inter interconnected data centers worldwide. Okay. So uh, what this service offer is, it offers AI modeling and AI inference, uh, which, which actually is just AI learning, right? Machine learning. So traditionally, if, if a company wants to implement or, or even just to test AI, it will cost you a fortune to just buy the equipment, okay? 
and a lot of and also it involves a lot of expertise to set up and run the system itself. So, but with as a service model like this, trying out AI has never been easy because uh, everything you need to start is just a few click away on our platform Equinix. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you see this uh, map here. So these are the all the locations where uh, we have built the, the the system, but you can actually access uh, these uh, the, the service from anywhere in, in the world through, through the internet and also our, our interconnect in service. Okay. So uh, let's let's move on to the next example. Uh, Garina, I know you are looking after a service called Precision Timing here at Equinix. Uh, as yeah. a product manager, so uh, can you tell us more about this service? Yes, Thomas. So um, it is a time as a service um, uh, product. So in the data center or any real time applications, time is all too real and must be managed very precisely. Precise time synchronization is critical in every industry. Apart from finance, financial services need highly accurate time to maintain an ordered sequence of transactions. Enterprise applications are highly depend, dependent on the precise timing as well. So for example, broadcasting and gaming, spot streaming also require precise time synchronization to ensure um, um, the orders of play in multiplayer games or prevent the lip sync error. Mm -hmm. So traditional time synchronization approaches company have used which can be costly and difficult to build and maintain with significant capex investment and not easy to expand as well. Time as a service is a concept that refers to the ability to purchase time-based service as needed, rather than investing in a fixed access or hire a full-time employee to maintain it. And time as a service is a neutral extension of the as a service model that is becoming increasingly popular in, in digital transformation ways. And Aquinas, we offer, um, we offer Aquinas Precision Time, fully manages all timing infrastructure and ensure rapid provisioning of the service file online. We do have the local time server on this in Hong Kong, Tokyo. And early this year, we expand our local time server in Sydney and Singapore as well. So it, it rides on our Aquinas fabric or network edge device to provide the service. It bypasses the internet with the high price securities and redundant at every level and has geographic diversity as well. It also provides both position time protocol, PTP, and network time protocol, NTP, which PTP accuracy can reach, um, can be can be of less than 15 microseconds as well. So uh, Aquinas Precision Time is a fully managed service that requires no maintenance. Also, as Thomas mentioned before, single click install and surface dashboard, and it is available all regions, America, EMEA, and APAC, IBX in Metro with Aquinas fabric or network edge device. And it is flexible and it is cost saving and enhanced security and increased scalability as well. Very impressive. Uh, and then let's move on to the third example. This, this one actually is my favorite uh, today. So this one is, uh, so in addition to the launch pad and precision timing, we uh, Equinix also support a company called um, Oxford Quantum Circuits, okay? Uh, it's a quantum computing as a service, okay? Uh, quantum mm -hmm. computing has always been very fancy to me, I think. So it is an other, ex and another exciting service, okay? This allow customers to access quantum computing resources on demand without needing, again, to invest in any expensive hardware or infrastructures, okay? So it's also riding on Equinix global platform. Okay? So uh, anyone, anywhere can access quantum computer resources through uh, 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 from any locations with low latency connectivity to the quantum computing platform, okay? Um, so um, I think uh, actually even today, quantum computers are far too expensive for most companies to build yeah. themselves and far too complex, right? Because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's operating in, in using a different language it, 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 and a different technology uh, in, in a whole, right? So, um, uh, but we are expecting really there will be a growing demand from organizations uh, so with technology sets to support a wide range of sectors, uh, I think currently a lot of 
drug discovery and 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 development to risk management and and even banking there it's very popular topic amongst the industry okay actually the, the picture here i'm showing it's a quantum computer okay this is actually a, really? a installed in one of our of our data center in tokyo so yeah, I think this computer from from Oxford uh, quantum circuits are very very beautiful. Uh, it's like an art piece, okay. But mm -hmm. it, and it's mm -hmm. also interesting to know that they are all named after uh, pioneer women in science tech. Okay? Uh, it's uh, they, they they were saying they're trying to pay tributes to their contribution to the industry. I think it's it's a good good idea. It's nice. And this one is actually called I think it's called Lucy. So yeah, it's 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 nice. It's so so pretty. Right. So uh, actually, what quantum computer offers is a uh, is very powerful compute powers. Okay. So what takes a regular computer to solve uh, in a year or, or number of years for quantum computers, it would just take a few seconds to complete. So imagine how it changes the, the the whole whole industry, right? So that is definitely something you want to keep your eye on. If you are a company that has a lot of data to process, such as banking and finances, I think I think even telcos or any service providers, okay, with data incentive companies. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so, um, by now you might have many questions. I understand because, for example, you are thinking, well, it's nice to hear about these interesting services. But how do I actually use them? How do I actually consume them? How do I connect to these services, right? Or, or you might even think of launching your own as a service on Equinix platform, but how to do this, okay? Actually, I can tell you it's very easy. It's not difficult at all, but there are some key considerations that I think we need to tackle, okay? Uh, we have to bear in mind, we have the aim is to um, increase uh, the um, the customer experience, right? We we should improve customer experience because uh, customer expects great performance. So if you're launching or if if, if you are using a XAS services, uh, I think the easiest way is to ensure we you get the best latencies to these services. Okay, and also cost, right? We mentioned in our survey, uh, some people are extremely concerned with cost, uh, especially I think. Uh, a good top, uh, a very uh, popular problem is when it's involved multiple clouds, okay? With CSP, mm -hmm. many customers told us they get bill shocks, okay? They didn't understand there was a, there, there will be some egress costs and, they, and then they realized uh, when you put data on the cloud, it's free of charge, but when you're trying to retrieve it, it will cost you tons of money, okay? And they receive these bill shocks. Okay, I think we should bear this in mind too. How we can avoid these? Okay, and um, and also some disrupted supply chain during the pandemic. I, even still, so I think. Okay, so uh, some considerations here we should think about. And of of course, we we shouldn't forget about security. Okay, a lot of these uh, as a service uh, services actually uh, let you con. Uh, consumed through the public internet, okay, which actually exposes a lot of the risk, okay. Um, so definitely we, we, we need to take care of that. And but and also last but not least, it's I would say is ESG sustainability, okay. For many companies, it is now a key goal, okay. It's no longer something that is nice to have, but it's really a mandate. So, uh, I think we we definitely should keep these in mind. So these are these are the challenges again. So, but we have we we can help you solve these. Yeah, and business must be prepared to adopt and evolve as a service continue to shape the business landscape. As a service is not one and done solution, but rather a dynamic and even an an ever changing model that require ongoing attentions and investment as well. So let's share our experience to how, how you can tackle leads when implementing the SA service model. Yes, I kind of agree more with your statement. It's an ongoing process, okay? Mm -hmm. What I'm sharing uh, with you now is what we have learned from studying many successful leading companies you know, all over the world. 
one thing we noticed uh, when we review the architecture, we noticed that they sh share uh, some similarities. Uh, some similarities, okay. Uh, their infrastructures follow a common pattern, and also the practice, okay, how they how they use it, okay. Uh, actually, they all start by interconnecting their infrastructure, the different parts of their infrastructures. Okay? They connect the infrastructure with private interconnections. The network, actually, when you do so, the network instantly become more secure by avoiding the internet because it, it's not all now private. So they connect them using interconnections. Uh, and also performance is also guaranteed. And the infrastructure, and, uh, and one similarity is that we, we've seen that the infrastructure has three key components. So I've break it down here on the slide. So you can see there's a digital core, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you have a digital ecosystem and also a digital edge. The core refers to the business core functions like your IT department, the HR, the customer services, right? So, uh, and then the ecosystem is really all the, the partners, like logistics partners, the telco, the telco service providers, suppliers, and also like all the different uh, it's the service providers we just talked about, okay? So they're all in, in this ecosystem, digital ecosystem part. And then last, we have the digital uh, edge. That is where all the money is made, okay? That is where you transact with your, with your customers, okay? Uh, so we saw these successful companies, they interconnect these three pieces together using interconnections, okay? Here are some numbers to, uh, of the, the companies that we have helped build a, a, as a service uh, platform on Equinix, okay? So at the digital core, uh, we are talking about these companies have average in, in eight locations, their the operations are, are scattered all over the world. They have more than 600 cabinets with us and they utilize more than 260 interconnections in total. Okay. And then at, with the digital ecosystem, it, many, many of them are actually interconnected with more than 30 partners on average. Okay, that is, uh, yeah, uh, impressive. And also uh, at the edge, uh, the, the, the beauty being at the edge is you're trying to be very close to your customers, right? Okay, so, uh, and, and to connect them, they don't just randomly connect them, okay? We didn't just apply some MPLS or some internet to connect them, okay? But they use a, um, a, a, they actually follow a pattern. We call this a pattern for success. We call it IOA. Okay? The IOA stands for Interconnection uh, Oriented Architecture. This is actually not a new new topology. It's, it's not new. This is the same principle that uh, network service provider have been applying for the last 20 years. Uh, this is how, they, how we um, expand the internet. Okay? So, uh, the the difference is uh, traditionally we often use a hub and spoke uh, topologies where we have a centralized locations and then where all the, all your dispersed locations is connecting to and then exchange information through this hub. Okay, but with what we are uh, what what they are using in terms of the IOA model, it's a distributed one. Okay. Uh, meaning they build core functions in different locations and then they interconnect them with them in, in a distributed fashion, okay? And then there's no single hub here, but there are fully meshed ones here, okay? Uh, meaning you can connect, interconnect the digital core, okay? You can integrate the digital ecosystem throughout the world, okay? And you can be so close to your customers, okay? Being close meaning you reduce the latency to, to whatever you are connecting, okay? And that is the simplest way to improve your application performance. Okay. But then you would ask, well, I can do this with any, with many other on many other platforms, but why with Econix, right? So why yeah. do we connect? Yeah, Econix can. One of the reasons is Econix can help place infrastructure wherever you need it, because we have more than 
240 data centers across 70 metros in 31 countries. And with the atmospheric and lower edge presence, we can get you all to the right places with uptime records uh, larger than 99.999%. And Equinix is a recognized sustainability leaders and the first data center company to commit to use 100% clean and renewable energy as well. We can connect to everything you need to succeed as nearly all the right partners you desire um, can be found in one place. Currently, with uh, the largest global industry ecosystem, there are many as a service partners you can choose to connect. We offer a, a ecosystem of more than 10,000 companies, including more than 2,000 networks and 3,000 cloud and IT service providers. With our Equinus Fabric, so you can connect to the SA service partner in a breeze, fast, and secure. And because it is private and everything happens within our data center, we do not charge any egress calls for retrieving data and reduce egress calls charged by the CSPs as well. So, and then Equinus, we offer you all the right possibilities as well. Um, uh, at Equinus, we provide our customer a full range of digital service to help you utilize the, um, the SA surface ecosystem. We have Equinus Metal, a bare metal surface as a surface as a surface that Thomas mentioned before. And then also Network Edge, a virtual network device as a surface, decision time, a time as a surface, and also uh, our fabric, which is an interconnection as a service, but you connect to all the cloud and networks that you require within a minute. And it deploys digitally in all the locations that your customer needs you. And Thomas, and did we mention we, uh, did we, mention we have we put tons of resources into ESG sustainability, sustainability too? Yeah, I think not yet, but I'm going to mention it now. So. Uh... Yeah, as I mentioned, sustainability is now no longer an option, but it's really a key driver to most organizations. So according to our own survey in APEC alone, 74% said sustainability is now one of the organization's most important drivers. So a lot of decisions are being made based on sustainability. Okay? Think about your business partners, right? your potential customers, likely they would only work or buy from an organization that have the same sustainability mindset, right? If you're one of them, or you would like to do more in regards to sustainability, here at Equinix, we can help you achieve your commitments to the environment and the society. And uh, at Equinix, we adopt a strategy called Future First, and it is embedding, embedded in everything we do at Equinix. The theme here is, Whatever we plan to do, we always start by thinking about how we can protect our planet, how we can unleash our potential to help and give back to the society, and how we can lead the way in terms of governance. In fact, Equinix is the first data centers to set both a science-based target and a global uh, climate neutral goal. Okay? We are the first data center to set 100% Renewal energy goal. We are currently at 96%. We are nearly there. Okay, we're working hard. Yeah. And in and in uh 2022 alone, okay, we invested over 45 million US dollars towards energy efficiency. Okay. And uh, promoting health, um, um wellness and diversity is also part of our company cultures. Even our executive compensation is tied to um, environmental and social progress. Okay. And uh, Equinix provides a sustainable digital infrastructures foundation on, on platform Equinix. Okay. So it's very easy for you to be involved in our sustainability initiative. Simply by using our platform, there's a potential for you to save car uh, uh, carbon emissions. Right. So on our platform, you can move to green IT and green your supply chain. With many as a service offering we offer, uh, you can architect exactly what, what you need without wasting resources. Our data centers are also built and designed, updated with sustainability and innovation in mind. And, and um, everything is, is uh, 
incorporating an increased reliance on low carbon energy, high efficiency cooling we're using. And um, yeah, a lot of uh, initiatives, initiatives have been implemented in our data center to achieve uh, greater sustainability. So in short, uh, we offer differentiated services to bring you closer to your customers and partners uh, and leading a sustainability digital first strategy. So Equinix, we can help you reach your transformation and sustainability go faster than anyone. And because of these re reasons, we truly believe that Equinix is the best place for you to deploy your digital infrastructure. Uh, yeah, especially to offer a as a service uh, if you are intended to do so. Okay. So uh, let us move on to a demo. Actually, I have something to demo. Okay. So by now, I believe you have some ideas how to take advantage of all these uh, XAAS offering, or perhaps uh, start you, you want to start your, your own XAAS. So what uh, we want to show you uh, in our demo is we are going to show you a two core uh, solutions builder. Uh, what solutions builder does is it's a uh, visual drag and drop tool to help you visualize um, your infrastructure, how you can build it. And it also gives you a workable blueprint a solution diagram showing all the components you need. Uh, and also it lets you uh, download a budgetary quote instantly. So uh, so you can decide whether everything makes sense to your business. Okay. Oh, Thomas, so, uh, let me Thomas ask, we have yes. talked about egress calls before. So can we show yes. how a customer can connect to multiple as a service platform? For example, yes, um, sure, to sure. AWS or GCP? Because as you mentioned, we have a lot of customers have issues transferring data between the CSPs. And yes, they, with they the bill shop, right? High, yes, and then they got a high egress calls and and which is char when CSP charges when we retrieve the data from the CSP, right? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so uh I believe we can you can see my screen, right, Karina? Yes. Uh, on the demo. Okay. So um you so this is our, so this is my our landing page. So this is uh yeah. So I am logging in. So this is the fabric portal. Um the you can get an account, it's it's free of charge. So just it's a self-service sign-up. Uh so we support uh this uh two-factor authentication. So I need to punch in a code. Wait a minute. Two I shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. So, so once I logged in, it will go to our landing page. Okay. So the tool we are going to show is called uh, Solutions Builder. So this is our fabric portal. Okay. So this is the landing page. So among the menus, so you can see there's an entry called Build Solution. So Solution Builder is under here. So I encourage to to go to a portal and sign up for an account. This uh, tool is free of charge uh, to all our customers. Okay, so you can uh, try it out yourself. So I'm going to do a demo. So uh, as I said, it's a drag and drop tool. So I'll I'll uh, do an example following the, I'll, I'll satisfy your request, Karina. So uh, <laughs> let's assume this company is a Hong Kong company. So they are mm -hmm. trying to connect, they, they are connecting to uh, GCP and AWS, right? And yeah. they are probably they are using internet. That's why they are experiencing some bill shock, mm -hmm. uh, transferring data between them. Okay. So what we always suggest the customer is, is uh, let's connect through Equinix because being Equinix, you have you can connect to these class providers uh, um, the quickest, the fastest, and you can also utilize our interconnection. So uh, traditionally, it means that this customer will have to order a router, send it to our data center, and then and then put it in one of their racks. Okay, but now we have uh, a service called Network Edge, which is a, a VNF as a service. So. Uh, you don't no longer need to ship anything to our to our data centers. Okay, you just order them online. Okay, so you can order a single device. Okay, a router. Okay, so and then we you can choose where to place it. You can place it in Hong Kong. Let's give it a name. 
route, uh, let's say uh, virtual router, okay? And then we have a lot of vendors for you to choose. We have uh, Arista, Aruba, every, every, I think a lot of people are familiar with Cisco. Let's choose Cisco this time, okay? Uh, we have the 8,000 we, okay? Now you choose where you want to deploy it, okay? Uh, now we are in Hong Kong, let's pick Hong Kong, okay? Uh, we have term links, okay? And then, uh, let's see, okay? And then there's some resources, okay? Then that's it, okay? Now we have a router, okay? And how do we, uh, and then we said we wanted to connect to a AWS, right? AWS. Yes. So NGC. we can, we, so we have a lot of service provider, all the stars providers, CSPs, oh, right? Okay. So uh, AWS, and then we want to connect to Google, okay? Very mm -hmm. easy. Again, mm. we need to configure it. We, there are many different ways to connect. So usually, because since we are in Hong Kong, let's say we uh, do a uh, high capacity. So we, one of the location here, I think, yeah, Hong Kong is listed. So we, let's choose this, okay? Okay. So we want to place it in Hong Kong. Again, we pick uh, locations because we really want to be close to them. Okay. And then we do the same with Google. Google. Okay. Let's pick maybe the Song One. Okay. We also connect them in Hong Kong. Where's Hong Kong? Okay. Hong Kong. Okay. So what you need to do is now you have a router, you know where you want to connect to, right? You simply order our fabric connectivity, okay? Just drag and drop, okay? And again, give you a give it a name just to identify these connections. Let's say uh, fabric to AWS, okay? Uh, and it also gives you instantly the pricing, okay? So let's say we want to connect uh, 1G, okay? You can do the same with uh, Google, okay? We pay uh, maybe a, a one G again, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let's give it a name. Fabric to uh, GCP. Mm. All right, now we are done. So, um, so uh, it, now you can actually exchange uh, data between these through this routing instance and also whatever you're trying to download from AWS and Google, the egress shards will be much more, uh, much, much less, sorry, no, no, much more, much less, okay? They, uh, AWS and Google, I believe they still charge you an egress if, you not, uh, if you are using a private connecting, but it will be so much less. So definitely not, not a bill shop. Mm -hmm. And at Quinix, we don't charge you any egress for, for doing so. So that is how simple you, 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 you build a multi-cloud, okay? Uh, we mentioned um, the um, the AI as a service, right? So it's actually on a metal. So it it's the same way to use any other as a service. Uh, so we can, let's say, let's do metal, okay? Uh, so metal, okay? Again, we choose where we want to connect uh, the, the metal platform. So let's say maybe we, yeah, again, in Hong Kong, to achieve mm -hmm. the lowest latency, okay? Again, same. Use our fabric to connect to this. It is, let's say, just 50 meg maybe. And now your company can instantly deploy uh, the AI as a service from NVIDIA through our, on our metal platform, okay? So this is how simple this tool is. What, uh, yeah, and also what I want to show is, uh, so you have this as a blueprint, okay? And it's also, we also here shows you what it all costs to you, okay? The virtual router, okay? The, the different connectivities. Oh, I forget to give it a name. Okay, I have OCD, I, I, I need to give it a name, sorry. <laughs> uh, break uh, to Metro, okay? Now it looks good. Right, so. It tells you have, you now have an um, budgetary code instantly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we mentioned the IOA, right? So likely your company won't be just operating in 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 Hong Kong, but you you will have other locations too, right? So let's 
move this to a side, okay? Let's assume you also have operations in, in, in Tokyo. So how do you do that? Okay, we build a router in Tokyo. You don't even have to travel to Tokyo. We just order it online, okay? Build a router in Tokyo, in our IBX, okay? Virtual router. Again, we select a vendor. Uh, let's do a Cisco again. We select an ICDASM. This time we put it in Tokyo. Okay, and then maybe to call again. So now you have a route in Tokyo, and then, and then maybe in in Tokyo you are thinking to connect to um, what what, what should we connect? Uh, maybe uh, Zoom because we, we are using Zoom now, right? Let us do Zoom. So we have Zoom Zoom communications. Okay, let's do Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so how do we connect again? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, is it available in Tokyo? Uh, yes, yes, it's available in Tokyo. And then we select Tokyo. Again, to connect it, just order fabric, our interconnect, your software defined interconnections, okay? Now let's say we want to do a 200 meg to Zoom, okay? And then remember we said the successful company, they interconnect the core, so let's assume Tokyo and Hong Kong are, are your cores, right? So these are your different departments. To connect these virtual route, routers, we have a service core device link group, okay? So we build a device link group. So let's give it a name, let's, uh, the digital core, we say, okay? So this is like your WAN for these routers, okay, a global WAN, you can actually instantly order. So how we do that? Very simple, again, using, just join this group, okay, using Equinix Fabric, just join this group, and then pick a bandwidth, okay, let's say maybe 50 meg is enough between these departments, let's click save. Now you have a full topology, your core, okay? And then your ecosystem. And then also because you are in Hong Kong and Tokyo, you are now so much closer to your customers in these regions. Okay. It is your blueprint. So uh, it's, awesome. it's all saved automatically. So mm -hmm. we can give it a name, blueprint. Do you spell it like this? Sorry, I'm not good with spelling. <laughs> okay. And now you have this blueprint, external blueprint. You know what component you need from Equinix. You also know how much it costs, okay? How much it is in Hong Kong and Tokyo, or if you prefer a resource view, how many routers you need to buy, what are the connectivities, okay? The device link. I think that is awesome, right? And also the yeah, best of all, you awesome. can actually download a copy. And you can send it to whoever you need, need approval from uh, or you can discuss with. Is Does it make sense for you? So, yeah, I hope you like my demo. So Yeah, this solution uh, is really that, powerful I'll, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, well, how about with that, let's pass the time back to Candice. I think we might want to answer some questions. Right. Um, thanks, Thomas and Garina. I think the, the solution builder is awesome. And, you know, it's so interesting to kind of um, map out your, your digital infrastructure in, in minutes, right? So, yes. um, yeah, with that, I just wanted to um, quickly share some of the questions we've received um, pre-event um, because mm -hmm. I think our, our audience actually pre-submitted some questions during registration and there are actually a couple of questions in the chat window uh, i mean in the q a window as well so who do you want to do first do you want to do the pre-submitted questions or yeah the, let's settle that the first, Zoom maybe. okay sure yeah. um okay. okay we've got a, a pre-submitted one which says um what are the key considerations for businesses looking to adopt everything as a service models okay yeah, I think we just the the whole whole seminar we just uh, 
uh, answer that already. So, but uh, as a summary, so I think uh, definitely you should consider the security, the cost, right? Customer experience, and also the sustainability side, okay? I would recommend anyone who wants to adopt XAAS model, prepare your infrastructure, okay? Prepare uh, user infrastructure that is ready for uh, XAAS model, okay? Uh, everything we have just talked about basically, right? Okay, so yeah, an, an interconnected infrastructure would be ideal to deploy a XAAS model. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks, Thomas. Um, so mm -hmm. there's another one um, which says, do you offer a free trial um, to your digital services? Uh, any free trial? Yes, we do. Yes, yes, we do. So our digital service offer free trial for you to experience how, how it works, okay? Uh, how, how to navigate through the portals and how to order these services, okay? Even build a POC. So you, is there, if you have some ideas you want to try out, uh, please get in touch. We can offer you free trials, okay? For example, our network, we, we have a 14 days free trial periods for all our customers. So you can uh, order, uh, routing instances like Cisco Router or Fortinet Firewall. Uh, it is a NFV as a service. You can deploy it anywhere you, you like on, on uh, with us at Equinix. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. So I just I just wanted to uh, jump quickly onto the question um, from Zoom. Um, oh, all right. Okay. Right. So there is. Uh, so one question. Um, ask what are the best AI use cases for the engineering infrastructure sector? So for engineering companies, I guess. Uh, so what, what are the best AI use cases? Right, so uh, my experience is that uh, they use AI to do modeling. So uh, I think, I believe we have some uh, manufacturing and engineering uh, industry companies are using AI in that terms. So uh, they try out different uh, scenario, like uh, to improve their, their uh, service at, and, and in when they are doing product design. So a lot of modeling uh, 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 using the AI platform, uh, yeah. So, but I'm myself not an expert in AI, but uh, if you really want, want to understand more, I, I think it's best to get in touch. We have a lot of, um, GSA, Global Specialist Architects, that actually help our customers to implement these uh, AI platform. And I'm sure they can advise you more uh, better than I. So uh, please do get in touch yes. after, after this, the, the, the webinar. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we do have um, a host of partners, right, who can also help. Yes. You know, guide True. through directly from things. Nvidia. Yeah, Nvidia yes. our partners. So right. I bet they have tons of tons of ideas for you to to implement. Yep. Right, and and this is actually a good segue to the next question uh, from Zoom. So, how does the U.S. embargo on Nvidia product to China affect uh, your services? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sadly, yeah, that's why we, we it's not available in our, in our uh, uh, China data center. Yeah, so it's I, currently I think, just on our metal platform. So, I think uh, um, that there are a couple of, t only, only a couple of top products, right, that are under embargo, but I think a majority of the other models of NVIDIA products are still available, at least in Hong Kong. Yes. Yes, it is. So it's just a, a very small uh, part of it, okay? But mo most of it, it's still available. So uh, yeah, in, in Hong Kong and in, in other many locations where we have our metal platform. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks, Thomas. I think, um, so I think we have time for one last question before we close. So uh, this is a pre-submitted one. Um, do I need to commit to a long-term contract to use Network Edge? And what is the minimum term? Ah, okay, that's a good question. So yeah, uh, uh, there's no long contract to sign or when, when you want to use Network Edge. Okay, we the charges are all prorated to the number of days. So basically, so the minimum is one, one day and the billing is on a monthly basis. So let's assume you spin up a Cisco router today 
And after two days, you decide it's not good for you, not for you, or you were just using temporary for 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 something for 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 some projects, okay? And you decide to terminate. Uh, we will just charge you for the two days uh, of of the usage, uh, and we will send you the, an invoice for for that month for two days. Okay, but of course, if you will, if you are planning to use it for longer term, okay, and you would like to commit to a term, for example, you want to um, commit to a twelve months contract, it's available, and and we can also give you a discount in return for that commit commitment. So, uh, yeah, so that. So you, you can even you it, it's yeah so it's it's more uh what would I say you 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 get a lot more savings when you when you can commit a term but we we don't ask you to sign a long term contract by default yeah. right thanks Thomas Thank I think and and there is also opportunity for anyone who might be interested in um try trial before. Uh, buying, then you know this is a great opportunity because yes, that's um, the the whole point with subscription model, right? As a service, yes. it's for you to try out new things without right committing into a large capex uh, spending. Right. Okay. So I think that's a wrap. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas and Garina. And um, before we before we leave, um, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to encourage you all to take part in the survey. So you can simply scan the QR code here on the screen and um, complete the survey. And then you'll get a chance to win a $100, uh, 100 US dollar free credits for Equinix Metal. And you can also sign up in the survey form for a Network Edge free trial as we as we just mentioned and you can actually play around and see you know if you can uh, architect your um, digital infrastructure just like what Thomas did um, in a matter of in matter of a, a few minutes so that's uh, quite fun to 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 do that as well I think so um, once again huge thank you to our audience um, I hope you will uh, take home with some new knowledge. And um, in fact, we're actually running another event next week on the 18th of May, which talks about the total economic impact of our digital services. And we have invited Forrester, an analyst, to come and kind of break down how you can actually calculate uh, the tangible and intangible benefits. And we also have a customer a very um, renowned customer in Hong Kong to come and do a sharing of how they are using the digital services and what are some of the benefits they've observed. So do reach out. And uh, if, you're, if you're keen to join, reach out and, and sign up the event um, with us. So uh, I hope to see you next time. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.